everyone, it's Calculus by Christy, and in this video we are going to look at the product rule and the quotient rule from a graph. So here we want to use the graph of f and g in this problem, and we first want to find p prime of 4. And a lot of students get excited and they want to jump in and right away find p prime of 4. But first, what I recommend doing is I recommend for your step one, first writing out p prime of x. All right, so over here we have p of x. Now I wanna write out the derivative. And because we have a product of two functions, we do need to utilize the product rule. So I would take the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. It is so important to just take that time to write out the derivative in terms of x. Step two, I then write out that same derivative with an input of four. So then I say, okay, p prime of four is equal to f prime of four times g of four plus f of four times g prime of four. Again, take this step by step, and I think it'll lead you to some success. Step three, I am plugging in the information. So to find p prime of four, I would first find f prime of four. That means I'm going to look on the f graph, and I'm going to find the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line at an x value of four. To do that, I must find the slope of this line segment from here to here. And because it's on a graph and it's a line segment, I'm simply going to use rise over run. So it looks like I go down one, right one, and I think that remains all the way to there. So we have a slope of negative one. G of four simply means the value of the function G at the X value of four and it looks like that has a y value of three. Then we would add f of four, which again is just the value of the function, f at four, which it looks like we have a function value of seven. And finally, g prime of four means the slope of the tangent line on the g function at the x value of four. So that would mean the slope of this line, because it's a line segment, right here, and it's a horizontal line. In that case, the slope is zero. And as we simplify this, we can see the final answer would be negative three. But notice how I've done these three steps. All right, I find that if students skip any of these steps, they often make silly errors, and I know if they went through these three steps, they would definitely see more success. Let's look at the second one, q prime of eight. Similarly to what I did up above, I first wanna find the derivative in terms of x. For q, we have a quotient, so we are going to use the quotient rule. q prime of x is equal to the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all over the denominator squared. And that is just the quotient rule for that quotient of functions. For step two, I'm going to plug in our input value of eight. So to find q prime of eight, I'm going to substitute eight in for every x value. Now it's time to plug in each of those values to evaluate. So step three for q prime of eight. First is f prime of eight, or the derivative of the f graph at an x value of eight, or the slope of that line segment. Looks like I rise two and run one, and that pattern continues, so f prime of eight is two. g of eight is going to be the value of the function g at an x value of eight, which appears to be two. Oh, two as well. All right, minus 
f of 8 would be the value of the f function of the x value of 8, which looks to be 6. And g prime of 8, we've got the slope of the g function at the x value of 8. Looks like I my rise is negative 1 and my run is 2, so down 1, right 2, or negative 1 half. g of 8, let's see, I found that to be 2, so it's going to be all divided by 2 squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 4 minus, this would be a negative 3, all over 4, or 7 fourths as my final answer. Once again, remember those three steps, and I think you will see a lot more success on these types of problems. I hope you liked this video, and I hope you found it useful for your calculus class. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so that you can be notified of weekly math videos. I hope you have an awesome day.